Hi everyone, it's Victor here once again and welcome to Victor's Tiny Kitchen where we cook Filipino favorites and more. Today I'll share with you my own recreation of the famous Max's Fried Chicken. You know, Max's Fried Chicken is very famous in the Philippines and they've been serving the country for many decades and they have pioneered the greaseless chicken sector. You know, I'm one of those that are stoked on this type of chicken and when they first opened the one and only location here in Vancouver, I would always drive to where they are and it became painful and it's kind of expensive to charge an arm and a leg for this chicken and so I thought to myself I have to learn how to make this in my own kitchen and enjoy this food without burning a hole in my pocket. And that is the very idea why I want to share this with you guys. So let's get started. Just to recap what we've done so far for this chicken here, I have removed the remaining hair on the skin of the chicken. And I've also trimmed some excess fat. I have already flipped over to the back the wing tips. So at this point, since we are going to marinate our chicken for 30 minutes, I want my chicken here to absorb the um, aromatics thoroughly. So what I'm going to do at this point is to poke holes all over the body of my chicken to make some entry points for my aromatics to get in. So I'm going to do that right now. Do that on the legs as well. Now if you don't have chicken lifters like I have here, what you could do is to use your knife and just carefully, slowly poke holes on your chicken. I'm also going to flip this over and do the back. Now this is good. What I'm going to do at this point is to set this aside and we'll proceed to the next step. And make sure to wash your hands after when you're handling raw meats like your chicken. I'm going to do that now. Now let's proceed to marinating our chicken and I'm using here a big Ziploc. And what I'm going to do at this point is to add two tablespoons of fish sauce in it. And then two tablespoons of granulated garlic. Now it's up to you guys but for me I want my chicken to taste garlicky. It's just so tasteful for me with garlic. And I'm going to do add about a teaspoon here of five spice. And I'm also going to add two tablespoons of white vinegar and then a teaspoon here of salt. And then at this point what I'm going to do is to close up my Ziploc here and then mix them all together using my hands here. It's kind of squeezing and rubbing them together. That's done. And then at this point, I'm going to slide in my chicken inside and then squeeze the excess air out and then close it up like this and then use your both hands to smother your chicken with the marinade. So this is done and what I'm going to do at this point is to stick this in the fridge and let it stay there for 30 minutes and I will be right back. So it's been 30 minutes and I've taken off my chicken from the fridge as we are done marinating it. At this point what I'm going to do is to boil it using my aromatics including the marinade here. And for that I'm going to use this multi-cooker pot. And the first to go in would be my 6 inch lemongrass base that I have crushed. And I'm going to use them as a bedding here. And this is where my chicken would land later on. This technique of making a bedding at the bottom of the pot using your vegetables is very important here. Because when you are boiling your chicken or any meat for that matter, there's a tendency for the bottom of your meat to burn. So that's why the meat should be landing on the bedding here. In this case, it will be my lemongrass. And I'm also gonna add three huge bay leaves here. And one teaspoon of whole peppercorn. 
And to this, I'm gonna add about two cups of water. So I make sure here that my bedding is neatly arranged so that my chicken can properly sit on them. And I'm gonna add my chicken into the pot with the front of my chicken facing down. And this is important to do this because the front part of the chicken has the breast and the legs, which are the thickest part of the chicken, and they take longer time to cook. And there's a marinade that's left in my bag here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour a little bit of water in it, just a wee bit, and then I'll close it up and then shake it. Make sure that the remaining aromatics are mixed with the water. And I'm gonna pour it in to the pot. There's so much flavor in it, I don't wanna waste it. And I'm just gonna wipe off the mess here. Make sure that everything is tidy. So I'm gonna turn on my multi-cooker pot here. Set it on boil. And we will do this for 30 minutes. And once that's done, I'm gonna be right back. So guys, I've ended up boiling my chicken here for 40 minutes on each side. And let's check for now if our chicken is cooked through using our thermometer here. So we're going for 73 degrees Celsius or 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, this one is cooked. It's at least 78 degrees Celsius right now. So what I'm gonna do is to turn this off. And I'm gonna take off my pot here from the boiler. So what I'm gonna do at this point is to take off my chicken from the pot using my chicken lifter here and big fork. I'm gonna transfer this over to a sheet here, a baking sheet. Let it rest here and cool down for 30 minutes. And we will be right back. And while my chicken is cooling down here, I wanna elevate the taste of the skin of it by adding more aromatics. And first, I would sprinkle every nook and cranny of it with granulated garlic. I just want my chicken to be a little bit more on the garlicky side. And I will grind fresh black pepper on it. And I'll sprinkle some salt too. And it's time to do the other side. That's good. And now we can proceed to the next step, which is to deep fry it. And I'm gonna be using this deep fryer here for that. Now there's already oil in my deep fryer and the oil is already nice and hot. What I'm gonna do is to lift up this basket here and let it hang on the side. And with my bare hands, I'm gonna lift my chicken as well and put it into the basket here. So at this point, I am frying the front part of my chicken. Now it's time for me to bring it down. So I merge my chicken in the basket here into the hot oil. Let me make mention that I set my deep fire temperature here at 160 degrees Celsius. And that's about the right temperature for me to brown my chicken really nicely. And I'm gonna keep the lid on here and check our chicken after 10 minutes. And once the other side is brown, we're gonna flip it over and do the other side. Now I'll be right back. It's only been five minutes and one side of our chicken here is already golden brown. What I'm gonna do at this point is to lift up my basket here. And what I'm gonna do is to flip it over. See your indication that the chicken skin is already crispy is that it doesn't stick in the basket when you try to move it or flip it over. So this one's totally, totally golden brown, which is very 
nice to look at. And I'm going to submerge it in this hot oil again. And then turn it golden brown. We'll check it after five minutes. It's been five minutes and let's check our chicken here. Let's check if the bottom of our chicken here is already golden brown. Yes, it is. So our chicken is basically cooked here. Look at it. It's already nice and golden brown. What I'm going to do at this point is to let this rest in the basket here and let the excess oil from the chicken drip down. And once that's done, I'm going to show you the final product. Hi guys, I'm back here with my final product, my fried chicken a la Maxis. And look at that. Isn't it the most gorgeous looking fried chicken in the whole world? I'm just kidding. But it's so fragrant that I'm so excited to snap off one of the wings from this chicken. And that is what I'm going to do right now. I'll taste it for you. But before I would snap this wing tip here, let me show you how tender and juicy the interior is. Look at that. That's how gorgeous it is. Wow, that's so yummy. And then I'm going to snap off this wing. So I'm going to take a bite now of this wing. Guys, this fried chicken is really tasty. And not to brag about this one here, this is even better than Max's fried chicken. The meat is just so tender and juicy and very, very savory. The boiling of this chicken with the marinade and all the aromatics have played a great role in coming up with this very delicious fried chicken. And I really can't emphasize it enough. So I hope you guys would give it a try. Because, you know, it's expensive to keep going to Max's fried chicken. And this way, when you learn to cook it, you don't burn a hole in your pocket. And once you do, please let me know what you think about this dish by writing down your comments in the comment section below. Thank you for watching today. And please don't forget to click the subscribe button. And I hope to see you on my next video. Bye for now.